Distinguished Rector of the University of Chile, Mr. Anu Vivaldi, distinguished members of the academic community, ladies and gentlemen, my dear students, Boinas Tardes, and Namaskar to all of you. I bring warm greetings to you from the people and the youth of India. As countries, we may be distanced from each other, but as societies nurtured and nourished by the Andes and the Himalayas, we have much in common and much to share. We both have been inspired by each other's leaders and their legacy. I pay my respects to the leading lights of Chile and this prestigious university, Nobel Laureate, Pablo Neruda and Gabriela Mistral. Of the later, we are celebrating her 130th birth anniversary this year. I also wish to recall the contribution of Eloisa Diaz, the first medical doctor of Chile and South America and an alumni of this university in whose name this hall where I speak has been marked. The humanism of your thought leaders are so deeply reflected in Mahatma Gandhi's teachings that I am almost tempted to, di to dilate upon them, but that I leave for another occasion. From Chile to China, from Mexico to Malaysia, on 2nd October, the International Day of Nonviolence this year, the world will celebrate the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Yesterday, I had the honor to pay my respects to him at the Plaza de la India in the city. That Mahatma Gandhi has shaped human history is well known. But more importantly, his simple yet revolutionary ideas continue to be the light in darkness, hope in helplessness, and faith in disbelief for us. Amid a turbulent 21st century, I consider this occasion to be opportune to deliberate with the future generation of Chile on the relevance of Mahatma Gandhi. Personally, speaking of Mahatma Gandhi is a revigorating experience of reinforcing the core human values that define us, that keep us happy. Today, I invite you to engage with this legendary leader in a creative and meaningful way. My dear students, Mahatma Gandhi, the father of our nation, brought us freedom through a nonviolent struggle. His political strategy resting on the moral force, a force that he called truth force or soul force, was unique and novel. His life had several folds each more meaningful than the other. For me, he was the experimental Gandhi defying class and race boundaries to go to England for higher studies, the pedagogue Gandhi seeking to integrate the mental and the manual for nurturing the foundations of integral education that sought to combine the head, the heart, and hands of both the learner and the teacher. The creative Gandhi transforming salt into a powerful symbol of mass movement and the determined Gandhi with his frail body walking through the villages of India with a lamp of truth amid 
the all pervading darkness of violence that marked our independence he was uh, unique in his approach a close associate of gandhi ji said that the mahatma combined both kranti that is revolution and shanti that is peace in his being this made him an inspiring illustration of courage and struggle the courage to retain the clarity of thought and conviction even amid the worst form of turmoil you would also know that mahatma gandhi inspired many others who were leading revolutionary struggles such as martin luther king and nelson mandela gandhi influenced the activities of freedom and civil rights movements in all five continents of the world his main guiding principle was truth his life a continued exercise in discovering and pursuing satya that is truth hence the term for his movement satyagraha which essentially means insistence on truth the tools that he used in pursuit of satyagraha were ahimsa that is non violence he believed morality to be the foundation of life and conduct and truth to be the end objective of life for him truth and love were same as god and he sought to realize god by serving the humanity mahatma gandhi belonged to all cultures and he drew from all religions while deeply rooted in hinduism gandhi was also influenced by christianity buddhism jainism and islam as also by thinkers such as tolstoy ruskin and thoro he thus came to represent the confluence of all that was best in the east and the west yeah. ladies and gentlemen and my dear students we also remember mahatma gandhi for his advocacy of theory of universal love and compassion on one level this translated into his belief in vasudhaiv kutumbakam that is the world is one family it mean tolerance and openness to different cultures and ideas and the non application of any judgment tell criteria except the criteria of truth on another level this manifested itself in his philosophy of sarvodaya or the uplift and salvation of all he believed that all action should ultimately aim at enhancing the dignity and destiny of all human beings no matter how socially or economically disadvantaged the world would indeed be a better place if all of us is to to apply this principle to guide our actions and our thoughts and it is these principles which form the bedrock of our foreign policy our initiatives to help and share with those in need and our sincere attempts to continuously strive for a world of peace and harmony mahatma gandhi carried his concept of universal love to include living in harmony with nature he advocated both sustainability and ecological sensitivity at a time when the industrial revolution and increasing mechanization were the mantra guiding the world he promoted concepts which are now enshrined in the sustainable development goals adopted by the united nations in our own approach to combining development with environment protection we have been guided by his teachings he would say and i quote earth provides enough to satisfy every man's needs i repeat earth provides enough to satisfy every man's needs but not every man's greed unquote our global initiative to set up the international solar alliance and offer solutions for climate change is inspired by these mighty words ladies and gentlemen chile is a musical society you as a culture have made music your lifeline this is a common value that you share with mahatma gandhi he believed that music was the essence of life true to his syncretic nature gandhi engaged with rabindranath tagore 
on teaching of music in the World University in Santi Niketan to draw from sources around the world, to be all inclusive. It is befitting tribute to him that we celebrate his 150th birth anniversary this year. We have over 130 countries singing his favorite bhajan, Arhaim, Vaishnav Janto Tene Kahiye. Yesterday, we heard its melodious rendition by your famous singers, Cecilia Frigero, Khoyakin Beo, and Juan Elgado. My dear students, <clears throat> Mahatma Gandhi practiced what he preached. He spoke of the soul of India residing in our country's villages and the importance of developing the institutions of rural India. Again, he embodied these principles in his own life, from living in an ashram or a self-sustaining community to his espousal of khadi or hand women cloth, not only as a symbol of resistance to the domination of the Indian market by British manufactured goods, but also as an extension of his philosophy of self-reliance and eco-friendliness. Many of Gandhi's concepts, which seemed out of sync with the world that he lived in, are today becoming increasingly relevant and finding their own momentum. Many of the policies that Indian government follows are inspired by Mahatma Gandhi. From the Swaksha Bharat program, with its emphasis on sanitation and public health, and to our fight against climate change. When we strive for gender equality and the uplift of all disadvantaged sections of society, we are following in Gandhi's footsteps. When we advocate the need for harmonious urbanization and develop the rural hinterland, we are echoing Gandhi. He was both a nationalist and an internationalist nationalist, and even today the ethical standards by which we judge our leadership have been shaped by Mahatma Gandhi. His influence, not only in India but on the whole world, was all pervasive. It is no wonder that we call him the Mahatma, that is, the great soul. Yet, at the end of the day, Gandhi was a human being. Many writers and commentators have focused on the persona of Mahatma Gandhi. Whatever their associations, it is beyond question that Gandhi was a unique persona who inspired both the East and the West, who forged new pathways for human endeavor while at the same time maintaining the strength and sanctity of tradition and spiritual roots. To all those who are adrift today in a sea of doubt and skepticism, his life, thought and philosophy would inspire them to regain inner strength and confidence. Mahatma Gandhi was more than just a man. He was an ideology, an institution that still resonates more than a hundred years after it was developed. As I conclude, I wish to recall the prophetic words of Albert Einstein. I quote, generations to come will scarce believe that such a one as this, ever in flesh and blood, walked upon this earth, unquote. I hope I have inspired you enough to bring a bit of Mahatma Gandhi in your daily lives. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Su Excelencia Ram Nath Kovind, Presidente de la República de la India, señoras vicerrectoras y señores vicerrectores, excelentísima señora Anita Nayar, Embajadora de la República de la India en Chile, <coughs> integrante del Consejo y Senado Universitario, honorables miembros del Cuerpo Diplomático, honorable diputado Vlado Mirosevich, señora Ángela Geria, medalla Senado Universitario, autoridades presentes, estimados estudiantes de ciencias políticas y de estudios internacionales, amigas y amigos. 
En primer lugar, quiero agradecer muy profundamente la presencia del presidente Covín. Él, en su propia trayectoria, como abogado, como político, como diputado y hoy como presidente, nos da un ejemplo de lealtad con los principios y de preocupación por la igualdad y la proyección que una sociedad en su conjunto tiene. Quiero destacar el rol que India ha jugado en el mundo y el que juega hoy día, y que es un actor tremendamente importante para un entendimiento global. Por ello valoramos mucho la relación que tenemos con India y agradecemos muy profundamente en lo específico de nuestra universidad lo que India ha hecho por programas para nosotros tan importantes como son el programa espacial, en que India jugó un rol clave, crítico en apoyarnos, como también lo que quisiéramos desarrollar en el ámbito de la astronomía, del derecho, de la economía, que son áreas en las cuales ha habido un trabajo conjunto. Creo que el legado de India y la ayuda que hoy día nos presta es extraordinariamente importante y lo agradecemos. Quisiera decir solo dos palabras, una desde una vivencia personal en India y que tiene que ver con una visita en que me acompañó mi hijo, eso hace unos 15 o 16 años, la muy profunda impresión y emoción que me dejó ver India. Cuando uno se trasladaba por las carreteras veía un mundo extraordinariamente vivo a orilla del camino. Es imposible no recordar con emoción esas situaciones, por ejemplo, una barbería, una peluquería, orilla del camino, en condiciones quizá muy poco fastuosas, o la antítesis de lo fastuoso, pero que uno veía en esa interacción humana quizás dos cosas que a uno le tocaban el alma. Uno, la dignidad humana, una dignidad una forma de enfrentar la vida que a uno lo conmovía. Y lo segundo, una alegría de vivir. Imposible olvidar esas sonrisas abiertas, amplias, llanas. Ese sentido de la dignidad y ese sentido de la alegría es algo que uno quisiera guardar, aprender y recoger para siempre y algo que muy profundamente en la persona del presidente de India quiero agradecer. Y por último con el, la tremenda admiración y respeto de Mahatma Gandhi, yo quisiera ser muy franco y directo en expresar esto. Nuestra universidad ha vivido en las últimas décadas la intervención de distintos tipos de poderes. Yo creo que tengo que ser muy franco y decir, hay un poder que es el poder de las armas, que es el poder de la fuerza y vaya si nuestra universidad lo conoció. Hay otro poder que es el poder económico, el poder del dinero, y vaya si hemos tenido que lidiar y sufrir para declarar que eso no debiera ser la razón por la cual se contextualiza una universidad, mucho menos el objetivo que la institución tiene. Y está el tercero donde está Gandhi, que es el poder del espíritu, que es el poder al cual nosotros quisiéramos ser siempre leales, que es el poder que nosotros supimos defender en esta universidad. Y es por eso que hablar de Gandhi significa precisamente el triunfo, el triunfo del espíritu por sobre el poder del dinero y por sobre el poder de la fuerza. Y eso a nosotros nos emociona muy profundamente, nos da permanentemente una razón para seguir defendiendo los grandes valores que nosotros quisiéramos transmitir a nuestros estudiantes. ¿Cuál es el sentido de la vida? ¿Por qué tiene valor el conocimiento y la proyección a la sociedad? Y eso creo que cada uno de nosotros cuando en el aula proclama estos valores, de alguna manera también está evocando esta gran lucha que encarnó Mahatma Gandhi. Así que vuelvo a agradecer a India, vuelvo a agradecer al presidente y muchas gracias a todos.